Hunters, welcome back to another quick video. I've started playing around with the bow this past week and boy am I having a great time. Now I'll have a full tutorial and builds once the new update drops but in the meantime I want to quickly review the new dodge bolt switch skill. We'll go over how to use it, what the pros and cons are of using it compared to the charging sidestep and then we'll talk about how to apply it in combat and what situations are most useful. So grab a wing trick and let's go for a ride. Before we begin, let's talk about how to use these skills. Both can be initiated by while aiming, you turn the left stick in whichever direction you want to dodge and then click B. This can be initiated anytime after an attack, before or after a combo. Now let's start off with the charge sidestep. This is the default switch skill that you start off with with Bow. In its most technical form, this skill is considered an evasion skill. And by that I mean its basic function is to dodge monster attacks. It extends your dash quite a bit so you have a large distance to move compared to a regular roll like most other weapons have. Additionally, you don't need to store your weapon or lose your ability to aim with this dash so the second that it ends you can immediately take aim and fire your arrows making it a great skill to reposition yourself in a hunt to make sure you are always hitting the correct hit zones you need for max damage. The additional skill that comes with this charging sidestep is the ability to charge your bow by one level. Now a quick overview for those of you that may be new to Monster Hunter or the bow in general, bow has a various levels of charge that reset if you stop taking actions. Now namely that's either attacking or dodging. Now as you can expect as the charge levels increase your damage is also going to increase. So when we talk about the switch skills in just a moment, keep in mind how to utilize this skill to get to those level 3 and 4 charges the quickest so you can get the most damage. Both of these switch skills have a way to charge your bow but they are very different playstyles so keep that in mind. So the charge levels come from just shooting your bow. Each shot charges your bow by one level. You can also hold the bow to charge each level up until you reach max gold level. Once you're at max level you can then maintain that max level by using the dodge skills we're talking about in this video. Now I'll explain this more in my full bow tutorial but a last note I'd like to make here. To reach level 4 charge, you must acquire the Mighty Bow Feather Helmet. At least for base game, this might change with future updates if we get other armors or a deco that might be able to bring this skill forward, but for now, you have to get the Mighty Bow Feather Helmet. Now let's jump back to the switch skill. So the charge sidestep gives you the ability to immediately raise your charge level by what? While either dodging or repositioning. So it's a great skill to maintain higher levels of damage by skipping that charge level 1 and going straight to 2 to 4 to get your combos off. If you are already at max charge and you need to dodge, both switch skills will actually maintain your current level of charge when you dodge. That's essentially the same system from previous games. And that's pretty much the advantages for the charge sidestep. It's a great evasion ability and it charges your bow which is fantastic. In my opinion here, you don't even need Evade Extender 1. The dodge is quite effective enough to actually move away or reposition. Quite frankly, one Evade Extender even pushes my movement too far, so I wouldn't even put it on the build. Alright, moving over, let's take a look at Dodge Bolt now. So essentially, Dodge Bolt is a counter move rather than an evasion skill, and this is where the major difference starts for this skill. For Charge Blade users, you can kind of imagine a guard point, but on a bow. So this skill still allows you to dodge in any direction that you wish, but it also has a single high damage melee attack. Just like the charging step, when you use it, it'll maintain your bow's current charge. However, the best part of this skill is that if you time the dodge appropriately, you can actually counter a monster's attack, rendering you invincible, and then charging your bow by two levels instantaneously. And to top it all off, you can then attack almost immediately with a rapid shot and then proceed to a power shot. So this is a lot for a single counter move which I think is amazing. The level 2 charges will put you straight away at level 3 if you had no charge to begin with, bringing you straight to high damage. Now while this is cool, the timing of the counter has to be almost perfect, making it a very difficult skill to utilize and learn. The dodge bolt has a very quick dodge and minimal movement so the animation is almost over instantaneously so your window of when you need to initiate this dodge is basically as you're about to be hit. Like probably not even a second, it's more like half a second before you're actually about to be hit. So let's take Megdemolo here as an example. So he's going to attack me with two arm swings and I know they're coming. So arm, dodge bolt, damage, dodge bolt. And now he's sort of in his rest phase so we can attack him quite a bit here where usually I'd have to like roll around or position myself to attack. Because of that extra damage I actually got a knock so it gave me another opportunity. So if you're late by half a second you'll get hit 
If you're early by half a second, you'll get hit. If you're completely off, you probably might get hit. Maybe not actually, because you might actually dodge the monster in time or you can initiate another dodge to get away. Although we'll talk about in just a moment why that's very inefficient. Now this dodge bolt counter can be used on almost any attack, including roars, making it a great move to counter roar and then immediately let loose some attacks on the monster. It creates a great opening for bow users. So that's dodge bolt in a nutshell. Now let's compare the two and talk about their application. My first comparison here is Stamina. Now Dodgebolt uses slightly less Stamina, so you definitely can spam this skill a little bit more often than the Charge Sidestep, but primarily it is to help you counter attacks more quickly. For optimal DPS, you honestly do not want to be Dodgebolting multiple times before shooting some arrows. The best way to use Dodgebolt is to actually counter an attack and then immediately do some damage. If you're using the Charge Sidestep, do you consider that it takes up a little bit more stamina, so you'll have to combine it into a combo like I said previously by charging your bow and skipping level 1 and then attacking with levels 2 to 4. Now in terms of movement, Dodgebolt also has a much smaller movement distance than the sidestep. I would highly recommend you add at least one evade extender when using Dodgebolt, at least if you can fit two that's amazing but one is a must. But even then, Dodgebolt isn't entirely considered an evasion skill. So if you need to evade, just roll like most weapons. At the most, if you need to reposition, do it once to make sure you're repositioning. But if you find that you need to dodge bolt more than once just to reposition, you're actually losing stamina and instead you should just be rolling. So instead of dodging, when you use the dodge bolt, you need to be prioritizing countering any single attacks or roars. Now, the monster attacks that you counter here is very crucial in using this skill effectively. There are certain attacks that you can counter but you shouldn't. These include multi-hits and charging straight past two attacks. Now the quick multi-hits will drain a lot of stamina just to counter as well as increase your risk of getting hit if you don't counter every single hit. This is possible though, like you actually can't counter every hit because the dodgeball does have a 360 degree effective range. Now charging attacks on the other hand are going to be very difficult for you to utilize that charge level 2 that you gain from the dodgeball. So even if you do counter, by the time you actually do a 180 degree spin, take aim and then fire, most hunters will lose their charge. Now I definitely don't think this is impossible to do. If you have really good muscle memory, you could probably get an auto camera to turn you 180 and then get your shots off. Alternatively, if the monster has a good hit zone on the tail, you might be able to get your shots off properly. But anything other than that, more often than not, you're going to be able to turning around and then shooting a bad hit zone, which is just less DPS than just rolling and shooting the right hit zone. So this is really up to you and your skill. And that brings up my next comparison point is that this skill is really helpful to hunters who know the monster attacks well. I don't know if others will agree with me on this, but I think the dodgeball skill is very useful against almost all monsters, but it highly, highly, highly depends on your knowledge and your awareness of the monster. If you really want to use this skill effectively, you must be countering all the appropriate attacks so that you can maintain that high charge damage and take advantage of those small breaks the monsters take after attacking you. If you have low awareness of a monster, I would highly suggest you use the charge sidestep so that you can evade attacks that you don't know the timing of and then keep your attacks going and maintaining your DPS or just preventing you from carding. Final note I want to make here is that the dodge bolt is very useful for up close and personal playstyles. So if you prefer the bow from a distance, it's most likely not the skill for you. The dodge bolt has a melee attack which is quite extensive damage. So if you want to utilize the skill, you should be up close. So even if you're not countering a move, but instead are dodge bolting to reposition, you get that melee damage in and you're making use of all your damage. And that's about it for my comparison ladies and gentlemen i really enjoy the dodge bolt skill but i think it really varies from hunter to hunter the dodge bolt and charge sidestep are two very different bow play styles and i think both of them are effective the charge sidestep is definitely more comfy while dodge bolt is more of a high risk high reward play style damage wise i'm not entirely too sure yet so don't quote me on this but i haven't calculated or run the test yet but i will for my full tutorial but from my early experience, I do feel both playstyles are viable, but it again depends on the hunter's skill and your playstyle. Alright everyone, that's it for me here. I hope you guys are all having a great week. I'll be doing some more hunts and flushing out both this week on Twitch, so if you want to hang out with me, come over there. Otherwise, look forward to my full bow guide, which should be out within the next week. 
So as always, guys, stay safe, be happy, and keep hunting. Scott Sensei is out. <laughs>